Good evening and welcome to Real Talk with Anele right here on SABC3 where the stage is yours. South African women in the entertainment industry have been sharing with us and celebrating new phases of their lives as a host of the celebrities have become mothers for the first time. Now I'm talking about the likes of choreographer Techies, uh, singer and dancer and I mean home queen Busiswa, as well as actress Samke Londrovo. As we get closer and closer to Mother's Day next weekend, today we thought we should catch up with some of the leading ladies in the industry to talk about the joys and stresses of motherhood. A little later in the show we welcome singer and songwriter Tamara Day who's enjoyed a triumphant return to music. We've also got stylist and personal shopper Sepin Bunda who recently celebrated her little bundle of joy turning six months. But first, she was the bubbly 19-year-old who, after winning Miss Teen South Africa, very quickly won a place in the hearts of South Africans across the country. She's entertained us on screens as a presenter for YoTV as well as Sally Matunzi. Currently, she's part of the Afternoon Drive show team on Umshobo Wenene. In just the 10 years, she's affirmed herself as one of the people in TV and radio with staying power. She got married. She's a mother of two-year-old cutie patootie, uh, Bukile Chete. How quickly time flies. We welcome her back for the second time. Hello there, Ziza oh, Chete. I'm so excited to be back. Thank you. And that introduction was just like so amazing. And course, this is... Uh, yeah. You, you see, you're a mother. This is you. Like, you're like, okay, that was great. Let's <laughs> <go on." laughs> yesterday, I mean, so what? Because yesterday, obviously, I told people that you're coming today. Okay. And then I called you Zizo Beta. I'm like, Zizo Beta will be here tomorrow. Me, <gasps> in, <Mom. Jonga>. <laughs> <laughs> the tweets that came in, you're doing pranty when you're doing calm. Everyone was like, hey, 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 hey. So, Missy Bamba, I'm doing calm. Right? We were like, Sissy, 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 yeah. please do not mess with the chat household. And I got home, I'm like, oh my word. Do you sometimes forget that you are Zizo Chete? You know what, for the first time in two years, I yeah. actually, for some reason, the one day I was like, Zizo Bet. Halfway through it, I was like, but, uh, sorry, we were past that long time ago. Uh, but that was the first time in like two years, yeah. And the, the signature, is it, what is it? I said, I practice, I lay a down. I was ready. <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> How quickly after you met him, were you practicing it? Um, <laughs> Actually, after a while, yeah, really? it's been a while. It's yeah, yeah. been a while. Mm. So we're actually chatting with the team as we're discussing, because I mean, you've been here before. Sure. So we, and we're asking, what does she more identify with? Because you know you can run through your accolades. Right. You know, you were on, on, on your TV for a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, Silly Matunzi is really, you know, what the country knows you for. Yes. But then there's Garnier, and mm. then, you know, then there's Lotto. Where now, when you think about yourself in terms of your career, which one is more Zizo than oh anything else? Oh my gosh, else? that is such a tough question to answer. Um, ooh, mm. I think it's, it's going to have to be Useli Matunzi. Yeah. Simply because there isn't a character that I played in that space. Who you got to see interacting with people is yeah. who Zizo is. Um, and, and that was a journey that people got to grow with me on, starting as a young adult and then sort of developing. That's sort of all-encompassing. Yeah. Everything else came to complement what I had already that. started doing oh. uh, on Sally Martins. So for that reason, I'd probably say that. I'm like, how many years later, you guys? <laughs> how long have you been gone there? I think it's about three years now. Three, almost four years. I don't know why it feels a lot longer, yeah, yeah. but a lot shorter at the same time. Yeah. Do, you, do you still like, let me watch to see what these guys are doing with my uh, brain? Once in a while, yeah. I will pop in, but that's usually the time that I'm putting my baby to sleep. Mm. So his time, I don't compromise. So if he's fallen asleep a little earlier, then mm. I'll, I'll pop in and see what they have to. You, you almost strike me as someone who's never in limbo about what they want for themselves, right? Sure. So, and, 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 and as soon as I said this, then one of the writers was like, yes, but I mean, she was on, on your TV and she herself was like, I don't belong here, give this to somebody else. And she moved off to Stelly Matunzi, yeah. which then is indicative of the fact that, yes, us. I, I'm always forward thinking as far as I can be yeah. with my career. Um, most things that I do are not actually spontaneous. So when I get to the destination, it's because I've been headed in that direction. I'm just not an announcer of things to Good say, girl. look out, <laughs> this is, uh, nah. <laughs> when it happens, you'll know that I've probably been planning for it for a while. Uh. Um, even, even, even the transition from Selima Tunes, I'd known for a while, I was like, okay, I'm growing, I'm phasing into this next stage of my life. Yeah. And I'm quite confident to let other people, you know, continue doing something mm. because what Without arrogance, I trust my talent. I know it will land me in the mm. right spaces because I back it up with hard work. Yes. And that, I think, is the important part. So, so coming into radio for me was so exciting because I'd be like, 
doing the countdown secretly for five years, four years, three years, two years. Now I'm ready to do this. And I jumped into that space. And the team, Gumas and yeah. even the station, I mean, I could not ask for a better place to grow and learn yeah. and to have an impact in such a different way. But, you know, as exciting as it is, I think of Mshobo and Nene. Um, sure. um, so, I mean, we all grew up on it. It was yeah. in the backdrop of our lives, right? Yeah. So to go into it, is it not daunting? Because A, you're from TV. Usually it's radio people going to TV and right. not TV people, you know, that much into radio. Although I find that that's balanced out in the yeah. last, say, five years. And B, it's Tosa. As in Zulu, yeah. right? Yeah. And now you're out there checking yourself because you're like, <laughs> I can't come here with Opet Obam, you know, like that, that slang yeah. that, you know, you speaking in the streets. Yeah. And this is what I love so much about it, also because it stretched me. As I can just find a school in Moses Cross. So when the size of Theta and Asekaya and all of that, yeah. but I, once I got onto that platform, yeah. I had to be quite intentional about now I'm speaking it the way it is meant to be oh. spoken. And I ask a thousand questions a day and they're so patient with me. I'm like, I, so that I understand. The moment I understand something, I can apply yeah. it and I won't forget it. So every day I'm always learning something new. We have a, a stunning feature called Ubuntu Bam no Tatu So you dig deep into the customs and the traditions, Kwakosa, and he explains, this is how you do this. This is why, where this comes from. Which and that is so exciting. It's funny, I was, we, we, I was at home. When I was at home, one of those long weekends in Limbo, sure. and, you know, my uncles were doing something. I'm like, why do you do that? They're yeah, like, no, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you oh, just well, yeah, do. Zero. And I'm like, no, guys, <laughs> <laughs> because I know I must teach my son these things, And right? that's the thing about it. Once you understand, then you have that to give to your children yeah. as an inheritance. I think it's perfect that they live in a world that is a global village, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. But... In Lambos, you can't stray too far away from your roots. It's important to have some sort of stability in them. So the more I learn, yeah. the more I'm equipped to be able to teach him as well. Especially someone having such a powerful Kosa name and yeah. the heritage. Yeah. I, and yeah. It would be a shame if he just knew our culture on the surface level. Yeah. yeah. And also, it's, it can only make you more powerful. I get being in a global, sure. you know, environment, sure. the fact that, you know, being in New York is basically like being in Petersburg, right? right? right. I get that, but the fact that you can be in New York knowing that and about yourself. Adapt. Yeah. It, 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 you can easily adapt. And you just, you're a bit more layered, I yeah. feel. You've got more stories to tell. You know, you've got more lineage to work from. Absolutely. You know, uh, so you like flying under the radar. Always. <laughs> I'm the perennial underdog. <laughs> right? <laughs> but you no, know, there's underdogs, and then there's someone who's like, I'm not even racing, you guys. So right. <laughs> please race over Am there. I'm the not racing person. Yes, <laughs> you're not. I, I've never felt like if, if something is meant to go to you, it just goes to you. It's not like we're picking between Zizo and somebody else. Sure. Are you aware of that? You know what I try and do? Every opportunity that I do get, yeah. I use that to speak on my behalf. Uh. So so when I get a call from someone, I'd like to think that you are kind of decided about that you would, would you'd like to work with me. Mm. It's maybe just a contract situation that we're yeah. working out. Yeah. But there have been instances where I've, I've also had to step up and, and, and show what I'm capable of doing. Okay. But that for me, I, I'm always very conscious of not uh, putting myself forward in comparison to someone else. It's always, this is what I'm able to do. Yeah. Whatever everyone else is able to do, that's amazing. And whatever your criteria is for this thing, yeah. you can then make the final decision. But I don't believe in, in burnt bridges. I don't yeah. believe in trash talking people to get yeah. ahead. I think there's enough space for all of us. Yeah. And yeah. I believe if you continue to back up your hard work mm. with your talent, you will get where you want to go. Now, here's the thing, this entire thing you've just said. Okay. That, for me, would be the, the basis that beauty pageants are built on, but people don't think it's that. Because I think when we talk beauty pageants, people think it's comparison. Sure. But it's not. Mm -mm. It's, 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 it's a magnifying glass. Yeah. I'm going to magnify this about myself because yes. I think that's what the best thing I have to put forward. Yes. You can magnify something else about yourself and, you know, may the best lady win. Absolutely. So... I, and it's even tough to say may the best lady win, may the person most suited for this particular role win. Uh, I've had to learn also to be so conscious about my words because <laughs> that can also speak to the mentality that you have about something. Yeah. So if you're told, oh, the best lady won, what does that say about everybody else who didn't necessarily get that particular thing? They're the best. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
which is which is kind of like opposite to what we've been taught yeah. to or how we've been taught to think. Yeah. But I've I've applied my mind consciously to being aware of how do I say things mm. because that speaks to your subconscious. And from now going forward, I would like to be positive as best as I can be. When did you decide that? Um, it's been about two years okay. in in the making that I've I've been making this transition, which is not easy, especially in our industry because you hear no a lot. Mm. Mm. So mm. for me, mm. I interpret no as not right now or mm. not this particular thing mm. not that no you're not good enough so that that helps but i think the beauty of hearing no a lot is that you also say no a lot and this is what i want to discuss oh, when we come yeah. back when did she <laughs> say no uh when zizo is <laughs> when zizo isn't giving hopefuls a chance to dream about winning millions through the lotto draw that she presents every week or when she's not infusing her youthful energy on um sabonene's mask okay she's splitting her time between two of her favorite men in her life We'll find out about those men after the break. And welcome back to Real Talk right here on SABC3 where the stage is yours. So 10 years into her career in TV and radio, and Zizo Chete is still a woman on the move. She's kept her focus on a goal and did things at her own pace, which has helped her face the pressures that come with our entertainment industry. But it was also her quirky, warm and nonchalant character that caught the attention of a certain man in politics. By 2015, Zizo and my Shome Chete were saying their I do's and quickly welcomed their first child into the fold, who, I gather you are very obsessed over. Oh, completely. I, I can't even, what, do you ever ask yourself, what is it that I love about you? Um, yeah, no, I wouldn't be able to answer that because it's everything. I, I fully believe I had a, a, a special experience from when he was in my tummy before he came into the physical world. Oh. We had our own vibes already from men. There's not a single person alive on this earth that loves that child more than me. Oh, oh my, <laughs> my son is like, <laughs> I, uh, number two, uh, number two, play. <laughs> and what, what was it like? Because I understand, you know, you, I didn't read many pregnancy books because sure. I, I was just like, you guys, you're going to come with your opinions and right. let me just find out for myself. Yeah. But one thing that I did get as advice from people and in, in a very casual manner is that, you know, careful you don't shut the world out mm. because even in that first three months when it's you and your child mm. and you and your, you know, you, you kind of forget that other things exist. Mm. So how easy or difficult was it for you to then kind of let the outside world in so mm. that you can carry on with life? Uh, I brought the outside world in in terms of just a little bit of research that I did, but yeah. I also didn't want to be anxious going into it. You hear all these horror stories. Right. I was like, ah, I'm not trying to be about that energy. Worst case scenario, I've got both my moms, my mom and my mom-in-law, they'll be able to, you know, guide. Yeah. Um, and I also wanted just to experience him as he is yeah. because every yeah. child is different and you don't fully understand that until you have your own child. And let me tell you, maternal instinct for me, might not be for everyone, but for me came as though someone just switched on a switch and I just knew. And you just knew, It's right? like this instinct that you can't explain. In terms of having the outside world have access to, I don't want him to leave the house for like close to a year. Um, and he said, it's like, I don't want him. I can't be indoors forever. I think I was just so conscious of energy. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing about it. And I was like, oh, he's so pure and he's so innocent. I don't want him to be interacting with energies that I have no control over. But then I realized, I mean, mm. he's growing. He has to experience what's out there. Mm. Um, worst case scenario, we are there for him to mm. take care of him mm. when he needs us. And how do you operate when you're not with him? you know uh, uh on the phone okay <laughs> yes uh but w i was like that in the beginning yeah but then i also had to just step back and be like i trust auntie i know she's gonna do a good job mm. she loves him like he's her child but obviously you got to check in and you make sure everything's okay especially if maybe he's fluish yeah. has he taken the medicine has he eaten all that kind of stuff but i i've relinquished a lot of that kind of like ocd behavior <laughs> around it um and and just allow them to enjoy their time because also he's very good about allocating time hey if he wants auntie and mom's there he will be like ma mm -mm. if he wants my mom i love that if he wants to die if he yeah. wants my cool he knows how to yeah. make time for everybody um but i'm glad that sleepy time is still mommy time <laughs> i remember i was like that where um you know 
because I'm not home sure. and I'm working, when I'm there, hey, it's my time. Yeah. And it's just like, uh-uh, yeah. I will decide who I'm spending time with. come back into the house <laughs> you know, and... When I want you, I'll come. <laughs> but then I yeah. love that because it just meant there's another person he loves. Absolutely. Right? And there's another person that he can go to when things aren't going right. And then also you're grooming your children to be independent. True. I mean, it's all, they will never not love their, their mom yeah. or their parents or whatever, but you want them to be able to interact with other people as well. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Speaking of interaction, I've yes. been dying to ask you all my family this, and I, sure. I see you first, so therefore I'll ask you. Your guy's wedding, right? Mm -hmm. It was tipped as the wedding of the season. And Who naturally, said that? why did they put publications? That because oh. it's my summer <laughs> chapter, and this was the Do you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like Kim and Kanye. Aye, 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 Without, the <laughs> <laughs> Without the meltdowns. Without the meltdowns. And I was thinking, so if I was your friend, right? Sure. Obviously, your wedding would have some high powered people there, right? And because in South Africa, politicians are celebrities and celebrities, you know, can go into politics. So sure. it's a very high profile wedding. You know, did you not fear that your friends might become secondary citizens Never. at the wedding? Never. Good. Um, also because my mom-in-law does not treat people according to status or ranking or whatever. Uh -huh. Everybody had the same level of standing. Everybody uh -huh. was treated the same. Of course, the dignitaries, you go through the protocol for security yeah. reasons yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But it was a family wedding. It was not a celebrity it's these No, wedding. never. We've never operated like that. And I don't foresee it being an issue going forward ever as a thing anyway. Because you, you actually don't even operate like that now. You know, no. we don't see you in his and hers. Literally, opposite. <laughs> so, you know, there isn't or wasn't uh, and will never be that distinction yeah. like that. Yeah. Because umtungu umtu at the end of the day, which is also what I love about my in-laws. And I suppose that's what makes it work. The fact yeah. that you have to be very realistic. Yeah. Because it's a marriage afterwards. It's yeah. not a wedding. Yeah. The wedding is a day, but Absolutely. the marriage and these people there are there to help you make the marriage work. Absolutely. So what what is and graces have you had to let go about marriage in three years in? You know, you go in believing a certain thing, uh. and then in it you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said it was going to be like this. <laughs> it's, so, it's so difficult to say because probably at different times, certain things become more more uh, in your area of focus or in your eye line or whatever ah, it is. I just think don't be afraid to ask for help. Not everybody has it figured out. And if you don't know something, if you don't ask. Mm. So for me, um, I've always leaned on people who are older than me, have more knowledge than me, and yeah. um, can guide me in certain things. So if I don't know, I'll be like, Mama, how do I handle it? How do I navigate it? Mm. Rather than sitting there believing you've got all the answers when you or really don't. You have to have them. Yeah. 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 I, I ask. I ask questions. That's the, the meltdowns happen when. And you know, because we don't speak, yeah. so Uzizo doesn't know Anele's issues, you know, regarding being a mother, being in a relationship, and right. having careers. So, because I don't speak about them, you think I don't have issues. Exactly. You're right. So, as soon as you just speak hard, you're like, you know, guys, I'm We're working on how together. to forgive. <laughs> how do I do that? <laughs> then we just sit down and we can, and we can space it out. Yeah. That line I was speaking about, politics, entertainment, very blurry, right? You and Tome, like, have a, it's, it's just, you are in entertainment and he's in politics and mm. they just, they never cross. Yeah, I see. You know, this is, I've always tried to explain this, and this is probably the simplest way I've tried to figure yeah. out. He is 100% competent and capable of doing his job. He doesn't need me to help him. And so I allow him that space. And he believes the mm. same about me. And so that's why it's never like a scrambling for attention type of thing. Mm. Um, I support him as best as I can and vice versa. And so we'll chat about it, debrief each other <laughs> about work. And, but, but other than that, I, I let him do what he needs to do. And yeah. That's beautiful. He's 100% competent because in, in, in the power couple narrative, it's almost like you, you have to be building in, in, in each other's space all the time to show that you are a force together. But Whereas I also think people must just stop buying into the hype of all the titles people throw at you. Um, that that's going to put you under unnecessary pressure because now you're not living life for yourself. You're living life according to what other people think mm. or believe or project that, that plant. onto the situation. So the sooner you can start to just take cognizance of what do I want? Yeah. What do we want? How are we planning on getting there? Yeah. It makes it a lot less um, uh, pressured. 
returns at the end of the show. Um, earlier on, I was chatting to her, even before we went on air. She seems like she's a little booty. We'll find out. Aye. You are, you are. Uh, so back in the year 2000, she was a young Pretoria girl with a love for house music, was itching to be given a shot to work with the best in the business. While a chance encounter with DJ Pepsi would lead to her being introduced to Oskido, and the rest, as they say, is history. Tomorrow Day is with me on the other side of these. Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3, the stage is yours. So her arrival onto the music scene was unapologetic and straight to the point. She was the first lady. Her debut album, So Titled, uh, saw her collaborating with musical greats such as the late Lebo Matosa and Tanis Mazwai. Now, Tanis Mazwai is not late, Lebo Matosa is, please, in case you guys are running around Twitter saying I said things. Uh, now, that debut album would earn her three summer nominations. By the year 2005, she had partnered with the DJs such as Ryan Dent and Craig Massive to form Flash Republic, where they would go on to release numerous number one hits as well as touring the world. Her most recent comeback has seen her release some real gems with the likes of DJ Zinle, that song you just heard, Oskido as well as Dibanj. Please welcome singer, songwriter, and new mama, Tamara Day. Hi. Before we carry on, yes. that song with DJ Zinle. Oh. Listen. Yes. It is a jam. Thank the fact you. that. When did you release it? 18 months ago? Babe, it's been in rotation for over a year. Like, it's crazy. December before last December. And it's still hot. It's still going. But I don't know. It was like a domino effect. Um, and we just, uh, we're so grateful for all the love we've gotten for the song. It's what are you saying in the, I get when you're saying, I see the stars are shining. Yeah. But you, oh, you go, hey, what's that? <laughs> I see. It's like you're sneezing and they kept it in. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, Zintle is little girl Cairo. Just that's apparently she just loves that part. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Cause and actually, when I recorded it, because when I sent her my demo, mm. when I I'd written it, then we went when we went to the studio to record the song. I finished the recording, and she was like, mm -mm, "You're not finished." Uh, She's like, "You've forgotten that thing." That, I was uh, like, "What <laughs> thing?" She was like, "That, that thing. thing." So she made me go back, and she was like, "Put it in." Yeah. So. Because even when we're dancing to it, it's almost like we're not dancing if we don't go. Hi. Oh no, I'm so glad. That's <laughs> great. Mama. Yes. Mama. I know. Are you not loving it, Mama? Babe, I they couldn't have prepared me. Oh. Uh, they couldn't have prepared me. I I and now understand you only really get it when yeah. when you're experiencing it. Yeah. Did you get to a point where you thought you would never be a mother? You know, um I got to a point, and this is crazy, where I kinda let go because you know, I will you know, I I was ready for the lesson of my motherhood when I was, you know, a while back. Yeah. But life was happening. I was bringing out another album. I was looking at the timing of things. And I was just thinking like, oh, I want to go on tour now. I want to tour Africa. There's so much I want to do. Yeah. And I was just thinking like, when am I going to do this thing? Yeah. When is it going to happen for me? Um, but at a point, I just decided to let it go. My soul understood I, I was ready for the lesson of motherhood. But whatever form that took, I was ready to embrace. So yeah. in other words, you know, my own biological child, um, uh, you know, raising somebody else's yeah. kids as yeah. my own, um, uh, fertility in vitro, whatever, I was, I was open. So in terms of just like, I'm ready for this experience, like, whenever yeah, it happens, when it's it ready happen. in whichever way. And I just decided instead of stressing about it, I would just stay open to it. Yeah. Mm. And then, yeah, and then, then it Actually, happened. we've had um, a, 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 a fraternity, like a doctor that deals with uh, pregnancies, yeah. those guys. Yeah. We've had them on here and they mm -hmm. say, the, you won't fall pregnant if you're stressed. 
it. And 100%. You said so when you say you let it go 100%. and then you weren't stressed about it. And you know so it. many people, I mean, uh, a lot of friends of mine, people I know, you see people, women struggling all the time. Mm. I don't know if it's it's society, it's the fast-paced lives we live. Um, Everything, uh, there's so diet, many things. stress, fast-paced. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I have friends brought to tears um, who, who are struggling, you know. So mm. I feel very blessed um, and honoured to be uh, a, mom, yeah. a mom. Yeah. So yeah. obviously if you're not planning it, planning it, but you're planning it, mm. the, you, when... When something's happening to your body, you don't think you're pregnant. You think you, maybe oh, you've got no, heart. I didn't. I, I want to know. I didn't. How did you know you were pregnant? I, I didn't. I really, and I had, I had, I had barely any symptoms. So, <laughs> so it was actually quite, I was, I was almost two months. I was literally just under two months when I figured it out. I know. So you just thought you were so, getting fat. <laughs> I know. I didn't even, I didn't have morning sickness or anything. I was emotional this is what gave away this is so so this is quite a funny story so yeah. i became at the time like very obsessed with this michael kiwanuka album yeah. which is called uh cold i can't remember what it's called anyway it's it's the title song of that uh, big little lies michael kiwanuka oh, oh okay oh, such a great album uh, yes because oh. leon bridges is also there it's with the river beautiful yes. yeah, yeah yeah the entire soundtrack so i became that, yeah. first obsessed with that song and then the album and then at that time i had this album on repeat and i was like waltzing around my house like in my kimono gown like in tears like in and out you know, just like sending songs of the album to my friends and just going like this is so beautiful and eventually a friend of mine called and she was like are you okay and i was like i'm great and she was like no babe like she's like you're very much she's like this music is sad and i was like it's not sad it's beautiful yeah yeah so we chatted and then she was like oh god you're sure you're not pregnant and i was like no 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 uh-huh hmm. maybe yeah. And then what, did yeah. you go to the hospital? Did you take a test at No, home? I did a home pregnancy. I did a few calculations and then thought she, maybe she might be onto something. But when you get the home pregnancy test, right? It doesn't, oh, it tells because very little, I, except. I, when I did mine, I had to go to a petrol station, mm. like a tough at night, because mm. I was like, I don't want people to be like, Anila was here thinking she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you go mm. to like a clicks or whatever. Mm. So you buy it at the little vending machine and sure. then you go do it and you're like, oh! then you go back and you do. So did you question the test? Yeah, I did, you know, and I, I, I also like, I didn't tell anyone for like two weeks. So I just, I did it and then I was like, cool. And you know, I was bringing out an album at the time. Two babies. Which I, yeah. Mm. So, which I postponed to release this year. Yeah. Um, uh, but I was in the thick of, of, of putting a lot of work into sort of relaunching my solo career because, yeah. you know, I did the Flash Republic thing for like 10 years. So I was very focused and I'd spend a lot of time and energy on figuring out my solo sound, yeah. like what it was, who yeah. I was, what was going on. And then was like in the thick of, of, of getting ready to put this album out. So the timing was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so two beautiful. weeks to keep it to yourself. Yeah. Who do you tell for us? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. My mom, my mom. Obviously, yeah. who was yeah. like elated. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah totally. Her yeah. first grandchild. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You so made her wait long enough. Yeah, very excited. Um, but yeah, and then, then after that, I went to see my gynae and we... Mm. we, we we made sure it was all. And and what big life decisions are you are you making then? Because you know, a you, like we discussed, there's many ways to be a, a mom, mm. and also there's many ways in, in which to raise the child. You 100%. can be married, you can be single, 100%. you can be divorced, you mm. could be never married or never whatever. Yeah, 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 so yeah. what decisions were you making at that point about it? Well, I mean, I guess I didn't. There were no decisions to be made. It was uh. as simple as, as when I found out I was pregnant, I knew this was it. There wasn't even a question for me, like, Good. you know what I mean? So it didn't matter my situation or the album or what, what, yeah, what. Yeah. This was happening and, um, and was going to be the most important thing in my life and take, and, you know, and take place, take the place of anything else that, that was sort of dominating my life at the time. So now, you know, when it was all about the music and, and don't get me wrong, it still is, uh, but now it's, it's, it's about her first yeah. and, and then the rest, you is know. she adding to the music? She is, you know, everybody was like, um, you know, really when I was pregnant, asking me like, have you written a song? You're making a lot of music about her. But I'm very like organic when it comes to that yeah. stuff. It's not something I would ever force. Yeah. Um, and really the, the songs for her only started coming when she came into the world. Yeah. And I, you know, I sing to her a lot. Um, every yeah. morning we spend time together um, and we listen to music together and I freestyle over mm. some stuff to her. And, and through that interaction every morning, the songs for her mm. started to come. 
Um, and now, yeah, now I know what my next album is all about. So, yeah, so now that has revealed itself. But I mean, I still got to bring this one out. So, yeah. guys, I'm working on it, but I'm like, my head, is, I'm, I'm already there. <laughs> But yeah. Whatever, Tamara. We want a crying baby in the background of one of your songs, okay? Okay, done, guys. It's done. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tamara Day. She'll be back a little bit later with Zizo uh, to chat some more about motherhood. Now, for a lot of women, pregnancy serves as a get-out-of-jail-free card, allowing them to just relax and, you know, let yourself go a bit. But when you're in the business of style and fashion, you'll probably be looking fabulous throughout your entire pregnancy term. Well, that was exactly the case with our next mom who's joining us after the break. Pepe Wundler will be here. And welcome back to Real Talk on ACBC3. As a little girl growing up, she had always had an interest in mixing and matching garments to create looks. So it comes as no surprise that she's carved out a career path for herself, having worked as a personal shopper, fashion blogger, as well as a stylist. In 2010, she enrolled in fashion school, but later she took the entrepreneurial route, where she founded the personal shopping and wardrobe organizing company called 1212. As an influencer, she's done work with some of the most popular retail brands in the country. Her style, some of the biggest music videos in hip-hop and worked with the likes of El Tido, Muggs, Reason and Pro Kid. Please welcome stylist and mama, Tempi Wunda. Hi, Nele. Oh my word, are you that like, like soft all the time? Hi, Nele. Yes, I am actually. Really? I, I like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> quickly, before we talk about why you're here, let's talk about David Beckham quickly. <laughs> yes. I'm so impressed <laughs> with the fact that you and him were chilling like your friends. Like, enjoy your It was so great, actually. He was so nice. Like, the day we did the shoot, he was yeah. like, apparently you're a mom. And I was like, oh, what? You found out? He's like, oh, is it a boy or a girl? He was just so nice. He was like talking to us and like not interacting with everyone else. He just wanted to know about my like baby. He's like, are you coping? I'm like, yes, David. <gasps> David, I can ask if she's coping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coping. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> We'll talk about that when he comes back, because okay. you guys are all going to be in the show. <laughs> all good. So say then your WhatsApp group, hey, D, and then let's say someone's come to the show. Uh, all right. So the, the day we found out you were pregnant, right, you were yeah. wearing a royal blue velvet dress, ne? It was, was it burgundy, like burgundy. Burgundy, there yeah. it is. But it was velvet, ne? Yes. Knee length. And you posted this picture. Mm. So before you press send, yeah. What's going through your mind? Um, I was actually with Jay. He took the picture, and it was actually a promotion um, Instagram post was for um, YDE that sent me the dress. So I was like, Jay, we're doing this. Are you ready? Because like everyone, there were so many rumors, there was news articles. So like, are we doing this? Okay, are you ready? DMs are gonna pop. Everything like yeah. everything's gonna be confirmed. And then I just sent. I was like, <gasps> but I was like, it's out. There's no more rumors. No one's asking me anymore. So it was like a sigh of relief, but I was still nervous. But your bubble with yes. JR, looked, looks amazing. Thank you. Right? Yeah. It, it's, it's the happiest I've ever seen you. Mm -hmm. So it, it almost feels like the fact that you, you guys have each other in that way as friends, as lovers, that yeah. everything is fine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it works out. Like, it is the happiest I've ever been, yeah. um, which is great. And he's just super supportive, and he's just a treat. Oh, he's <laughs> just a treat. And also, like, he produces music and yes. stuff, so, you know, there's going to be a song about this child one of these days. Are you, like, waiting, like, hey, babe, Skalopo, when are we? No, I don't put that pressure on him. If it happens, cool, but I'm not, like, make a song. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so what's what's been the biggest growth about you? Because you're not you're not old. I don't think you realize this about yourself. I think I'm old. Do I'm you? Not, I, yeah, I'm Aren't like scared of aging. Twenty eight in December, not yet. Yeah, Ivana, you're twenty seven, <laughs> bro. You really, you yeah. are actually very young. You know, so mm. you go through changes and there's things that you let go of when yeah. you become a mother, right? Yeah. So what were those things for you? It was definitely my nightlife. Like, I was crazy. It was actually getting too much. My mom was just like, eh. But, like, I'm happy. I've mm. done it. I've done, you know, I've had fun. I do miss it sometimes, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm happy with this new chapter in my life. Can't you do both? You can, but I can't. Because I used to come home, like, at 7 a.m. Oh. I can't do that anymore. Like, I was out this weekend, yeah. and it was fine. But it's just not the same anymore. But it's actually fine, because when I'm out, I just think about my baby. This is shocking because this weekend I went out and I came back at 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe as your child grows, you'll realize that so you won't be at the door when you get back. Be like, well, mom, this is, this is a total, 
it's totally, it's totally unacceptable. Yeah. How did you know you were pregnant? I was actually going for my um, annual checkup. Really? Yeah, and then the nurse told me, no, it's, no. <laughs> but how does she say it to you? I need the words. Uh, she was like, it was during the urine test, and she was like, oh, Matsipang, you're pregnant. And I was like, no, I'm not. And I was like, no, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, for my annual checkup, what are you telling me? I'm not leaving you with a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who did you tell first? I told Jay. And he said? He was shocked also, so I was like, I'll call you back. And then I sat in the car for like two hours. In one place? Yes, at the hospital. I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what I can't do, what? I was just thinking. I was like processing <laughs> everything. What, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, oh my word, my parents know I'm having sex? <laughs> it was everything possible under the sun, I know. Uh -huh. It was very scary. I can, yeah. I'm glad you can admit that. Yeah. But when did, when did it stop being scary then? Um, when I saw Jay and I was like, okay, we're doing this, you ready? He says, I'm ready. And I was like, okay, cool. And you come from a family, like a very big family, yes. right? And yeah. a very achieved family as well, mm -hmm. right? So do you, are you not putting pressures on yourself, you know, about that? And, you know, what is the family going to say? You know, how, what am I doing with this? And no, I stopped thinking about my family a long time ago. Like in that sense, I was like, this is my decision. I'm doing this for me yeah. and for Jay because it's our child, you know? Yeah. Like obviously I still respect my family, but yeah. I'm just like, I'm old. I yes. can do this, you know? Yes. Yeah. So how do you tell your family? Uh, my mom was actually away. And then she was like, I told her on WhatsApp. And she's like, I knew it. I saw that one picture on Instagram. You're telling me, and I was just like, oh. And he's like, you went to the doctor and you said you had a sore throat. So I was like, okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think I emailed my dad. Oh, that's yeah. very cool. Did you, did you write regards at the end? <laughs> Science and silly, <laughs> your daughter. <laughs> yeah, it was something like that. It's just a relationship my dad have always had. Like yeah. even when I've asked for money, it'll be a love letter on his bedside table. Dad, I need money for A, B, and C. Okay. So yeah. And apparently JR threw you your baby shower. Yes, he did. Did this not upset your friends and your aunts and everyone else who want to, you um, know? No, it's, my family were a bit upset, mm. but like I explained it to them and then they understood. And then my friends were just like, Tippy, you like things here, we can't afford the shower that you're gonna <laughs> want. So they weren't touched at all. And they're like, Joy, are you and Jay getting married or what? So yeah, like, yeah. No, it's just a baby, baby shower. shower. <laughs> Day before you go in to give birth, mm -hmm. what are the thoughts in your head? I was so stressed because every time my gynae would ask me, natural or C-section, I wouldn't have an answer. And he was like, we're going to end up having a C-section. And because um, I got induced, so the night, so you go in the night before you're supposed to deliver, right? Yeah. So then I got, um, went to Sunning Hill and then now I'm like stressed because I stress a lot. So then my gynae and then... They induced me and I was like cramping really badly. Oh. And then the doctor's like, I told you, Matsipang, you're going to have a C-section. <laughs> and I had a little panic attack, so then I had to go into theater. And then you, you C-sectioned it. Yeah. Caesar's Palace. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call yeah. it. And then like, sunroof, <laughs> that's doing yeah. what I can say. And in, in, in the moment where, you know, cause you know, they say, we have a baby. Yeah. You, you know, what are, what are you thinking? What's... I kept looking because he didn't cry when he came out because he had a tongue, his tongue tie, is it called tongue tie? Yeah, yeah. So they had to like cut the web, the tongue web, oh, whatever. Yeah. So I told Jamie, go to him, go to him, I'm fine, I'm fine. Like, so they said to him, go to him, go to him, I'm fine, go. And then he cried and I was like, okay, I'm fine. And I was like, Jay, just go with the baby. So earlier we mentioned because you're a stylist and, and a yeah. fashionista and I mean, I've never seen you look bad. <laughs> when you're going to the hospital and you're packing your bags, like, are you like, these are the pajamas, baby, please make sure that I'm wearing these pajamas, okay? No, Jane, I actually joked about me having my makeup done <laughs> and like, I wear one of my wigs. And then the day came, I was like, nope, tracksuits, tank top. Comfort. And my slides, I was like, mm. So I wasn't looking cute at all. And I just had my hair in a pony because, you mm. know, my mom was like, no braids. Yeah. Just most natural state. <laughs> you, 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 this has been so cute. I've loved speaking to you like this. Listen, <laughs> pregnancy is an all-encompassing experience, as you can hear. That is life-changing, but it can also leave us feeling quite vulnerable at times. So imagine having to go undergo all of this whilst being placed under the microscopic, you know, blaze of being a celebrity, right? After the break, we wrap up our conversation with Diesel, Tamara, as well as Sippy about being celebrity moms. Stay with us. <laughs> I 
And for the last time this evening, welcome back to Real Talk on ACBC3, where the stage is yours. When Kim Kardashian gained over 20 kilograms during her pregnancy, rightfully so, she was ridiculed in the media for being too heavy. But when models barely gain a gram throughout theirs, they're criticized for setting a bad example to other women. So it seems when you're a mother and a celebrity and you've got celebrity status, you're always in a predicament regardless of what you do. So I want to talk about the scrutiny that some of my guests, Zizo, Tamara, as well as Teppi, could have gone through. Did you find people being a little bit judgy or wanting... Because you know, people who know you're going to give you advice anyway. Right. Yeah. Now, because mm. you're in the public eye, even a stranger of like, hey, can look this? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll go and find you. Did you find that? <laughs> not during my pregnancy. I think I had a lot of comments after my pregnancy because oh. I'm not going to lie to you, I enjoyed the food. Yeah. I, hang, I hung on to that weight <laughs> for as long as I could. <laughs> Eventually, I was like, hey, I don't have an excuse anymore. My child has grown. But um, yeah, I think the, the weight thing always comes up yeah. some way or some yeah. shape or some form. So and to for be fair, even if that. you're not famous, yeah. even if you're not well mm. known, it's always yeah. like, okay, okay, you know. Yeah, it's a thing. I mean, but everybody's different, guys. Yeah. Every child is different. Every woman is different. Like, let let them, leave them alone. And then you were told, <laughs> if you breastfeed, you lose the weight. My child grew teeth at two months. I wasn't going to have my teeth <laughs> being burnt, bitten off. You know, what yeah. was the scrutiny that you were going through? Um, Actually, I didn't have a problem because I actually gained 25 kilograms with my pregnancy and no one believed me because I went from a I think a 30 to a 38 and I think my height is so what helped me yeah well. and then yeah. my breastfeeding literally made me lose all the weight like yeah. I'm actually skinnier than before I was pregnant oh what makes sense <laughs> about your parents now that you're a mother tomorrow. Oh gosh, everything. Really? Oh, yeah. I oh know, my right? Gosh. <laughs> you know, already you get to a point in your life where you, you understand your parents did not have a book telling them, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, they were figuring it out, they're just human, da -da -da, all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. You figure that out as yeah. an adult. But then you have a kid, mm -hmm. and yeah. Then, yeah. then you feel bad even. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, oh my God, I was a terrible teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and I now, was moody, I was emotional, <laughs> what was I doing? I was killing of shame. Then I'm like, oh, for my sins, what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> So now I'm just bracing myself because I know it's coming, it's fine. <laughs> mm. What makes sense about being a mother, now, about your parents now that you're a mother? I actually listed now. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, mom, like whatever. Now I'm like, okay, mom, I actually need your help this time. Please <laughs> show me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's true, Zizo. I think for me, the sense of family, mm. Mm. really just being <clears throat> in each other's space in a meaningful way. I mean, in, my, in our family, That's conversations true. go like this. There's no hierarchy. There's no dad must speak to mom, must speak to kids. It's a da da uvilo asanda wenzi And so okay. that's kind of the, uh, okay. the space we have. And I find that now I realize my parents knew when I was lying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because oh, yeah. Because my son tries to lie to me, but I can see as he's walking by, you know? And now I'm just like, oh, my word, the time I said I was studying, they knew. Yeah. <laughs> they just knew. What do you miss mm. most about being pregnant? The st like strawberries, I, like it was the only thing I craved, but yeah. I don't miss it. I was so miserable because he was a big baby for my frame. Oh. So I was always uncomfortable, the hot bird. I, actually, there's nothing I miss. You know there's a joke The there, kicking right? was nice, sorry, yeah. That was yeah. a nice, like in the morning, that's it. You know there's a joke <laughs> about him being too big for him. Make the second bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Make the whole bigger story. I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist. She walked right into that one. <laughs> she did so. As she said, I'm like, does she know what she's doing? What do you miss about being pregnant? I miss huh? everything. Mm -hmm. I had an amazing pregnancy I mm. didn't feel sick I didn't feel tired I miss his kicking I miss our conversations I miss the attention I want it all back now I was saying to the team that the attention you get when you're pregnant is that you walk into a place and you order a toasted cheese and they're like she's getting it first and then you like okay so how line. about you walk into Sam's and I just exaggerated a little bit and they moved me right to the front of the line I was like yes nice. <laughs> what do you miss just it was just that time when it was just me and her. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's such a like, it's yeah. such a sweet time. Like, and I also was very blessed to have a very easy pregnancy. I don't know yeah. how that happened because in my mind, I was going to be a mess. Yeah. Like, it was laughable. Me pregnant yeah. was like a joke. <laughs> but um, it was a very different experience to what I uh, expected. Mm. And it, everything about it was incredibly sweet. And um, I don't know, a, a sense of like, 
connectedness that I'd never yeah. exp experienced yeah. in that way before. So that I that I missed. It was now it you know it's it's me and her and the world. Yeah. But um but it was a very sweet tender time you yeah. know for us. Yeah. These are you pretty. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you have another question? No. I'm not <laughs> saying that. Um, are you broody? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Well, yeah. Mm. We'll see. Mm. Tamara, <laughs> obviously you like... No. I just want another one. Are yeah, you yeah, yeah. I do, I do. I'd love to have a boy. I'd love to experience the different yeah. experience yeah, of it. Yeah, but yeah. um, but guys, I have other babies to think about. I've got albums yeah, <laughs> this is true. that are coming out as well. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm certainly. I don't feel like I'm done. Yeah. I'll say that my soul doesn't feel like this story is finished. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Again, I'm. I'm not. It's not something I'm chasing or anything. Uh. But I've got lots to do, and uh, she's. Uh, she's keeping me very busy. So we've got ten <laughs> seconds. Uh, I know everyone's already saying, yeah. "Must try for a goal now, eh?" Yeah, not yet, guys. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Just maybe in two years' time. Maybe, maybe. Okay. I've got co now these are verbal binding contracts, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> these ladies are saying they are ready. Thank you so much to all my guests this evening. Thank you. Thank uh, these you. are Twitter, uh, Tamara Dezel, and Steffi Bunta. You guys were wonderful. Thank, thank you so you. much. Love you, girl. Oh, thank <laughs> you. So listen, tomorrow, since 2014, the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital made a concerted effort to raise a billion rand to build a specialist pediatric hospital in Johannesburg. Construction was completed in 2014, and the facility has since opened in phases to serve South Africa. Tomorrow we get an update on the journey that's been travelled in preparation for the Nelson Mandela Centenary ce Celebration. So make sure you're joining us for that. We're out of here. Isidingo's up next. Thank you for joining us. Bye.